Tell me that. that he was like, you know, I've been Brad Pitt's stuntman. Um, uh, yeah, no, I've heard a lot of stories from him. Um, the funniest one is probably his first date. If you ever get to interview him, I don't know if you probably interview him for this at some point. I hope you do. Um, ask him about his first day on a film set um, doing a, a driving stunt. Uh, I think it was in the middle of the desert, which is just incredible. The fact that he's had a career after that day is, is exceptional. Can you tell me a bit about, again, we imagine Berlin, particularly that time, to be very cold, austere. You yeah. talked about all the, you know, yeah. Clerk and Dagger stuff. But the fact that it's kind of really neon lit, the world you live in, and yeah. quite hedonistic, and yep. we see what precipitates the fall of the wall. Can you talk to me a bit about that? Yeah, no, the world that we set the film in is, um, is, is alive, and it's vibrant and it's people without anything, trying to make something, trying to live, trying to love. Um, very much that kind of uh, thing. Somebody said this to me about Shameless. I can't remember what, I think it was actually, I think it was actually Anne-Marie's mother or something like that, said, uh, well, it's what you do when you don't have anything, you, you, shag each other, <laughs> do you know what I mean? And you dance and you drink and you party, you know? Uh, and we, sh we take that approach of showing what Berlin, what East and West Berlin were like at that time. And the, the jeopardy inspiring a kind of frenzy and a kind of adrenaline uh, in the people that are involved in it and the, and the bystanders, the civilians that were involved in it too. I'm not saying that it's 100%, this is the way Berlin was. This is a, a, you know, an artistic eye on what Berlin was like at the time. And this artistic eye is neon lit, sex and drug and alcohol fueled, and people not just, um, people not really, not people not spying and dying for king and country, but people spying and dying for the love of it and the sheer hate uh, of it at the same time, you know, being compelled to do it. I hate to put you on the spot about this, but whatever comes to mind, uh some of your fondest memories of shooting this, what, what comes to mind if I, if I ask you that? Um, um, uh, doing a scene in which uh, I wake up apparently having had a threesome to find myself wearing a plaster cast and tied to a bedpost. That was coming up with that in like five minutes and the director and the producers going like, yeah, that'd be a great idea. That was hilarious. Uh, and I was really pleased. You know, there's that kind of creativity and freedom in it, um, I found. Um, doing a scene, um, uh, working with uh, Eddie Marzan again was a great joy. Uh, and freezing, just standing there freezing our bums off uh, in minus 10 degrees, pretending that we're warm with Charlize Theron, who's wearing like a mini skirt and like that was it, like a mini skirt and a tank top. And me wearing a, a string vest tank top as well, try to do scenes and pretend we were warm, it was pretty funny. You were very stylishly dressed in this one. Thanks, thanks very much, cheers. Um, did you research the era and the period, or was that not really necessary given the nature of the movie? Uh, not so much the era and the period, um, but because it was a very sort of, there's such a stylized approach to it that I feel like the world was created in the script. What I did research was the spy game and, and spies themselves. And as much as we were shown, uh, you know, an arguably a, a, a heightened and, or quite obviously a heightened and not utterly realistic version of spy life or what it was like to be involved in the spy game at that time or ever, um, they were all based, they were all still rooted in truth, I think. And the things that I found that were very illuminating were um, the things like MI5, post-war, look actually actively, or MI6, sorry, uh, actually actively looking for alcoholics, looking for closeted gay men, people who were able to be functional in society but were, had always held a secret. Uh, and that was something that I took into the character. Um, somebody who was very good at hiding things but who was being consumed by something that he was hiding as well. Um, and so I made him an alcoholic and um, I tried to make him gay but they wouldn't let me because they wanted 
something else that happened in the movie and all that kind of stuff. Um, but I thought that was a really interesting thing that they were actually looking for people who had been actively hiding things. And also the other reason they were look, they actively looked for alcoholics as well is because they would thought possibly they would be expendable. They'll die by the time they're in their 40s or their 50s, so they can die with all their secrets. Incredible selection criteria. Would you mind doing that one sentence thing of what you hope perhaps some audiences might take from it? Oh, I just, I, truly what I hope audiences take from this is just have an amazing, great, uh, adrenaline-filled, fun time in the movie. That movies, that's what it's designed to do. Um, and, you know, connect with the characters and fear for them and love for them and hate for them and all of that. But it's, uh, yeah, I hope they just have a rip-roaring time seeing some of the best fighting they've ever seen in their lives.